As somebody who has sprayed literally tens of thousands of texture repair, uh, drywall repair jobs, I really wish I'd tried this tool out sooner. I saw this a few years ago and I just got this recently to try out and I think it's a great idea. I've used it once and so far I liked it. Let's demonstrate this and see if it's all it lives up to be. Okay, today's video is a sponsored video. This item was sent to me and I am being compensated, so it is a sponsored video. But honestly, I've had my eye on this Easy Pro Texture Sprayer for quite some time. And the only reason I really didn't pick it up is I just kept looking at it and thinking, you know, I wonder if it really works that good. And my texture hopper, well, it works just fine. So I got my old texture hopper here. It's covered in plastic. I recently used it and I just covered it up. So it looks kind of weird, but this has been my go-to for many years. I've actually gone through many of these. I've got about four of them and about two or three of them are just pretty much worn out. But I'm gonna tell you, this thing here might be the answer to it. Okay, so what this consists of is basically just this gun which I've got right here. They sent me two of them because I'm probably gonna give one of these away. And then these pre-mixed bags of texture. Now these are supposed to be good for orange peel or knockdown. It's all in a matter of how you use it. So let's talk about what are some of the advantages to this. Well, as you can see on here, it says virtually zero setup. It's ready mixed texture in a bag, so you just screw it on here and start spraying basically virtually zero cleanup cleans up in seconds and i'm going to show you it really does and you only need one gun one tip one texture so you can spray everything you need right from here so what i would see is the advantage to somebody like me that does a fair amount of of texture repairs or for those of you that just do it once in a while is the ability to just pull this out hook this up and within a short amount of seconds, basically you're ready to start spraying a repair. And then when you get done, it's really easy to clean up. And what you do is you save the lid off of this bag right here and put it back on and it's sealed, ready to go for the next time. Okay, so what do you do to use this? Well, you start out by uh, shake it up a little bit. You can kind of squeeze it and knead it and just make sure it's not separated too much in there. So we'll do that real quick. It's, it's already pre-mixed and everything, so it just takes a little bit. And then what you need is a, an air compressor, of course. Now, this thing uses a very small amount of air. They say 2.5 CFM at 60 PSI for orange peel or 30 PSI for knockdown. So to make that point and to prove it, they also sent me a new air compressor. And I've actually got it in my pocket right here. So, uh, okay, there it is. No, it really is a pretty small air compressor. This is the California Air Tools. And I actually have one that's a little bigger than this. And these are great compressors now. This one doesn't weigh much because they're aluminum, mostly aluminum. And 2.5 CFM, that's a really tiny amount. So we're going to see if it actually will run off that little air compressor or not. Now I painted this sheetrock um, easel here of mine, painted it a dark color so you'll be able to see the texture going on. So we're going to spray two or three styles of orange peel here and just see if we can get various texture patterns. And then we're going to spray a little bit of knockdown. Now the way this works, the way you control the texture pattern is how hard you squeeze on this. So what it's doing is this is sucking uh, texture up into this airstream. As the air goes through here, it's creating a suction on this tube, but it's not a real strong suction, so it doesn't just collapse the bag. But when you squeeze it, you start feeding material in. So the lighter the texture, the less you squeeze it, the heavier the texture, the more you squeeze it and the more that comes out. So we're going to play with that and see if we can do that and just how hard it is. Now all the instructions are 
here on the back of this package. So let me just go through them just really quickly. You gotta set, set it up for a minimum of 60 PSI and that's with the trigger wide open. So free flowing 60 PSI, not just 60 PSI like it is right now. So we're probably gonna have to turn that up. Uh, you shake it well, you open the bag, save the cap, screw it onto the gun and you always want to practice away from your primary area because if you haven't tried this before it's always good to practice i practice even with my texture hopper i want to make sure the gun is working right and everything is just coming out right before i potentially ruin a repair job which i could always clean off and redo but just practice off to the side and you want to also do that because there may be a little bit of liquid here at the top or in the gun you want to make sure you blow that out so then all you do is you pull the trigger first you got to get the airflow going first and then start squeezing this so it could take you a little bit of practice if you've never done this it is different than a hopper now don't go away too soon because i'm going to tell you how you can win this and some of these texture bags here and later in this video there is a special thing you got to do and one of you will win it okay because my uh, air compressor is probably going to run as soon as i start this up i'm going to quit talking here in just a second and let you watch and i may possibly overdub or something but we're mainly going to show you how it works here okay another little tip when you go to set your free flowing 60 psi make sure the bag's not attached i just pointed it in my trash can and sprayed texture which didn't hurt anything but little tip there okay let's try we're gonna go with a light and then a medium and a heavy so first i'll do a little off to the side test make sure this is screwed on tight so with it this full i'm not having to squeeze the bag hardly at all right now so let's go the uh, light over here. Okay, I would say that is a nice light texture. Let's go for a little heavier here. light medium now let's go for a heavy texture i'd say that worked really well now we're gonna spray some heavy down here and then see how it does for a knockdown i got a little burst glob right there which i suppose that might happen triggering it like this okay that was my fault i kind of tested it i squeezed it and then pulled the trigger you got to practice this and make sure you get your sequence right let's see i'm going to do a little more heavy knockdown over here Okay, it definitely takes a little practice, but I would say it worked. Now let's hang on a minute here. We got to give this a little bit of time to set up. If you're doing a knockdown, what you generally want to look for is that shine to start fading. It, you don't want it to go flat. Okay, I'm going to show you a close-up picture here so you can see the shine on this. And you might see it more if you look kind of from an angle. While that's setting up a little bit, I'm going to show you a close-up of the fine and then next will be a close-up of the medium. And I can tell you that I think I can spray a little more evenly with my texture hopper. But for these small repairs, I think this is gonna work great. Plus, I, I, this is only my second time using this. I really think it takes a little bit of practice to get the even spray down. And then here's a, a close-up of the heavy. And then I'm gonna show you a close up of the one I got ready for knocked down here. So let me talk about uh, how does this compare to canned texture and which one do I think I would use? Well, 
Guys, I've been doing uh, drywall repairs for over 20 years and nothing but drywall repairs, so tens of thousands. And in that time, I've probably used 10 spray cans of texture. And here's why, they, they sort of do work. I'm gonna do a video on that one of these days and show you how to make them work really well, but the problem is several. One is they're really expensive. I find that you get the best results with the pro-grade can texture like in this picture here. If you buy the cheaper stuff, you don't get as much control over it, therefore it's harder to get the look you want, the texture to match. So I go with that, which is around $18 a can, and it doesn't go very far. They claim huge rates of coverage. They make it sound like you can spray something like this, but in reality, they usually cover far less. So there's one thing. Number two is, if you just use a little bit of it and then you come back to it later, oftentimes it'll be clogged up. Even if you try and clean it, they don't clean up very well. And a lot of times while you're messing with the knockdown or whatever you're doing, it dries up anyway and you just can't get it clean. Number three, they don't work very good in cold weather. Uh, one of my tricks I'll show you guys is to heat it up. Sometimes you have to even in warmer weather, but in cold weather, it can totally suck. And I find it a little harder to get a actual matching texture. They just don't work as good. So I found that they cost way, way too much. It's just too expensive. Once in a while, I'd say go ahead and break one out and do a repair. But if you're looking to do this much at all, or you want to save some money in the long run, this is going to be a lot cheaper. The rest of that texture in there, it's still good. It's probably not going to go bad unless it maybe sits a year or two. So you don't waste near as much material. I think you can get a better control over what you're trying to do with this. And speaking of that, I actually screwed up, but I think it's still gonna work. I didn't turn down the pressure to 30 PSI, because I forgot. But by squeezing it fairly firmly, I still got quite a bit on here. We're still gonna get a knockdown look out of this. Okay, I normally highly advocate the use of a Lexan knockdown knife. I think they work the best of anything I've used. Steel knives are gonna flatten it quicker and this one may still be too young, but with really light pressure, I can get some knock down there. So metal knives, you have to have the lightest touch. You see, I'm just barely holding this to barely put any pressure because they will flatten the texture out in a hurry. So this still needs to set up just a little bit longer and then we can go ahead and get that. Now with a Lexan knife, you can get on it a little bit sooner. So another thing I can try here is this plastic knife. It can be a little bit more gentle, but see, it still leaves that corner edge. That's one of the things I don't like about these, so. Okay, let me tell you how you can win your own texture sprayer, Easy Pro texture sprayer, and some bags of texture I'll include with it. What you do is you got to comment down below and just any old polite comment, say how you like it, would like one, what you thought of it, any questions, any of that, and you'll be entered. But you need to include the hashtag easy pro, just easy P-R-O with the hashtag in front of it. That way I'll know you want to win one because some of you may have a question, you don't really want one. so. Put the hashtag easy pro, comment down below, give me a thumbs up, do that right quick while we're waiting on this to set up, and then you'll be entered to win it. Okay, I just took a picture of this. I'm gonna show you how it's starting to lose its shine. This side over here definitely is, but it's still, it comes out pretty thin, so you gotta wait just a little bit longer for a knockdown. Now there's a lot of things that goes into matching a knockdown, by the way like if you you have to look at how thick it is how much does it stand off the surface not just how big the pattern is because if it stands off the surface more that means they either use thicker mud or they let it set up more and if they got bigger pattern they either knocked it down sooner or they put more on before they knocked it down so there's sometime you need a combination of the two 
if you need it to stand off the wall more, but you want a big pattern, you might have to spray bigger drops, thicker drops, and more of them, and wait a little bit and knock it down. So there's a lot of experimenting that goes into knockdown, at least for matching. Okay, I'm gonna try a little bit more if I haven't let it set up too long here. So like I say, this is a terrible knife. God, let me see if I can find the right one. Okay, so you can see that was kind of smearing still because it is thin and metal knives, I absolutely hate them for knockdown. So let's try just a little test section right here with the Lexan knife. This thing, see how soft it is? It's much gentler on a knockdown. Yeah, that's still a little bit wet. We're going to let that set just a little bit longer. Okay, while we're waiting on that to finish setting up, here's all you do for cleanup. Put the lid back on, on your bag of texture. Take your gun, place the suction side into a little bit of water, and it only takes about a two-second burst, they say. And then, of course, clean off the nozzle. I'm not gonna pull the trigger. I think it's clean, but I'm gonna do it one more time because I'd let that sit for quite a while. And wipe off the end of that and it's ready to go for next time. And it looks pretty clean. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try that. I think it's still a little wet in the middle I did get it a little extra heavy right there but let's just see uh, now I waited too long okay so I'm gonna try that again I'm gonna clean this off off camera and I'm gonna try that again because first initial result is kind of disappointing on the knockdown okay you can see I resprayed some over here I've let it set up where I think it's long enough, but this stuff is pretty thin. So let's just try it a little bit. I may only do half of it here. Let's see. No, I think we can do it all. Okay, so we are getting a knockdown texture, but be warned, it is thinner than normal, so it lays down flatter. So if you need that thicker knockdown, I would recommend my sponge texture technique, but here's a picture of how it came out. And overall, it'd probably work for a lot of uh, texture matches. But again, that thinness is gonna be the one drawback to this. So my overall final opinion on this is, I love it for these uh, fine orange peel, medium and heavy. You can get a good match on all that. Now beware, it does, I've noticed it is shrinking quite a bit more than normal because it's got a little extra water in it. For knockdown, I would use it, but I'd be really careful. Again, if you need that little bit thicker build, I probably wouldn't use it because it just comes out too thin for that. But for a thinner knockdown, and especially on a small area, yeah, I think it'll get the job done. And again, for ease of use, easy to clean up, easy to set up, doesn't take much compressor, doesn't waste product. It, you know, overall, I like it. All right, I hope that helped you out, and thanks for stopping by, as always. I appreciate you guys, and I look forward to helping you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Oh, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up.